Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Storytime Spotlight. Today's episode, we have an artist who's been supported by Nightmare, Slander, and A.C. Slater, to name a few. He has releases on Bite This, Hybrid Trap, and making his debut, joining the Storytime Records family with his track, New Rave, and he goes by the name of Kyogre. How you doing, bud? Doing well, man. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. So... I'm very excited to get this going. Um, I've been a fan of your work for some time now. So to get things kind of going, where did you get the name from? Um, it's pretty simple. It was uh, my favorite Pokemon when I was a kid. Okay. Um, I'm actually a huge Pokemon fan. So yeah, okay. I keep up with all the, the new ones too. All, all the new ones. Okay. Do you collect cards by chance? No, but did you see that zoo uh, Pokemon collab? No, I haven't seen that one yet. They, he has zoo. one? Yeah, it, I, I saw it on Instagram the other day. He's doing a collab with Pokemon. He has like a, his own card. Okay, that, yeah, that's pretty that's sick. sick yeah. That's pretty sick. Yeah. Okay. So to kind of hop into things here, what DAW do you produce on? Um, I use Ableton, Ableton, but I'm familiar with Logic. Um, and, and I also use Pro Tools too, but that's you know, for engineering mostly. Right. And did you start off on Logic and you kind of graduated towards Ableton or you started on Ableton and just learned Logic in between? So I started actually in my first like ever DAW was Cubase. Oh. So that's a very niche one. It was from like when I was first started producing in 2011. Okay. Um, and I was doing like kind of like this trance kind of main stage kind of sound. Right, right, right. Um, okay. It's, you know, but I was listening to the, some of that stuff the other day and it sounds so funny. It's so funny <laughs> to listen back to some of the old shit, you know? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's funny, but yeah. you see how much growth you've had since then, which is like such yeah, a no, great, great feeling to, cool see to see these. The, the, the progress. Exactly. To see the exactly, progress. Yeah. Um, so in your opinion, what's the most important part in a track? So for me... Mm -hmm. I think it's not about just one piece. I think the most important part of a track is how all of the parts work together. Mm, okay. Because like you can have like one really strong piece, but if the rest of the track doesn't fit along with that piece, then you you know you might you might ruin the track in the end. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so it's like the the sum of the parts is always greater than like one piece on its own. Mm, that is true. That is true. Well, now working with so many different variables when it comes to like production um, once you get to the end of the track what would you say when it comes to mix downs and mastering uh, what would you recommend to start when doing this process um, so I'm gonna be honest with you I tried doing mixing and mastering myself for a very long time mm -hmm. and I even went to school for it um, and I realized that for me as an artist I want to focus my creative talent and all the time that I have on like making the, the tracks. And I find someone that I really like to work with who is a professional, who has a professional studio with analog equipment to right. put those finishing touches on my tracks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I've, talk to a lot of artists when they say this and they say you know you really shouldn't do your own track just because you listen to it so much that uh, you yeah. need a fresh set of ears on it for that um extra pop to actually come through because you're so focused yeah. on just one certain sound instead of the whole thing all together so yeah, yeah i definitely i definitely agree it does help sometimes though for people who are starting out you may not have the connections though for that, that yeah. type of there's, studio of course yeah there's 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 definitely like easy ways to get started in mixing and mastering like you know, ozone is one of the really uh, staples, I would say, you know, for someone who's just starting, mm -hmm. you can slap that shit on your track. And, <laughs> you know, it's a it's a good enough, you know, master. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. To start with. You can do so much with that. Um, okay. Yeah. So what were what are some plugins for people to check out? Um, I mean, I'm pretty much using everything that, you know, everyone probably knows about, you know, all the basics, serum, fab filter, Mm -hmm. um waves um but one thing that someone put me on to um he's actually part of brass tracks do you know brass tracks i can't say i know brass tracks so brass tracks they are like a, a duo of two like you know trumpet trombone players okay and they actually did that song watermelon sugar they did the, oh, the trumpets okay, okay. on there okay so 
I know one of those guys and he uses this uh, VST called Soothe. Um, and it's like secret sauce for vocals. It's, it's amazing. Okay. That's definitely something to so check, check out. Check out Soothe for sure. Soothe. Okay. I'm going to have to, let me write this down. Soothe. I'm going to check this out later because I'm always down to look at some new plugins. It's, uh, it's definitely nice yeah, to man. keep adding stuff. Um, okay. Now, when you're producing, we all know that sometimes we get hungry, we get thirsty. What are some of your go-to snacks when you're producing? Um, I'm a huge like gummy bear fruit snack fan. Nice. So you can always catch me with one of those. Uh, okay. I definitely like some uh, Cheez-Its or <laughs> those kind of. The yeah, Tabasco are ones are like top notch. I love the Tabasco flavored <laughs> cheeses. Those are so good in the white cheddar. Ooh, I never, tr- never tried the, the, the Tabasco one. Oh, try actually don't try it because then you're gonna get more addicted. It's it's pretty. It's on point. It's on point. So I think that doesn't some, get your hands super dirty, you know. Oh, I know. Yeah, you got to keep the little wet naps next to you. You know, <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> so, what are some production do's and don'ts? Okay, let's start with some do's. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, you gotta have. Well, these are so easy to say, right? But original ideas. Yeah. You know, you need to sound original. Yeah. Uh, John, I would say genre bending is, is very good. Mm-hmm. You know, you should do that. You, you don't want to be boxed into one sound. Um, and also risk taking. So you got to, you know, try, try new things, even if it might sound weird to some people at first, but you know, you never yeah. know when you'll be creating something new and everyone's going to be like, Oh shit. Like, you know, that's the new shit right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. What are some don'ts? Uh, and then the don'ts, um, you know, the, I would say there's not really many rules to producing. I feel like you need to do what sounds good, right? Mm-hmm. And don't do what doesn't sound good. <laughs> However you make that happen is up to you. You know, That's everyone true. has the same same type of tools at your disposal. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say about that. Don't okay. be afraid to try new stuff. So don't be scared of, you know, doing something that people haven't done before. Gotcha. Okay. Now on the flip side of things, what are some DJing do's and don'ts? Um, well, as, as I like a support DJ, you know, mm-hmm. at where I'm at in my career, mm-hmm. it's definitely important to like play your own, play your own stuff. Absolutely. And not be like influenced by like, you know, popular music or like what people are shouting at you like, Oh, play this song, play that song. I think you need to really establish yourself, you know, establish your sound. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, make sure to you know keep the energy up um, match the crowd's energy uh, and get them prepared for the next you know next act who's coming on stage yeah absolutely absolutely and Um, another thing that i've kind of noticed though is when you're when you're doing that i me personally i like to set up like a a playlist of stuff that i know i'm gonna play now how i play the order of it sometimes i leave it up sometimes i might just hot cue it depending on like what i'm doing what time slot but i feel like also what you're saying there match the crowd's energy that's also reading the crowd that's a very important part because there's nothing worse than you know an opening dj playing you know (laughs) some hard style and it's like 8 p.m so you know there's definitely and there's like there's like a few people in the in in the crowd (laughs) coming in you know they're just starting they're starting to get the vibe you don't want them to come and be like yo what the fuck is happening in here exactly exactly um yeah but another thing you don't want to do is like play the headliners tracks Mm. i mean that that sounds like it's obvious but like you know you you really probably shouldn't do that or don't play any of their like signature mashups like you know tracks that they usually like mix together like you don't want to like slide those in your set and then (laughs) very true very true Okay. Okay. Those are some good do's and don'ts. Now let's hop on into the one's got to go game. Now what I'm going to do is I'll name three things. It doesn't mean that you don't like all three. It just means which one of the two are more important and which one of the third ones is not. All right. So I'm going to name three. One's got to go in your opinion. Here we go. Ozone, serum, and massive. Um, I'm going to go with ozone. I'm going to get rid of ozone. Okay. I know I was just talking about it earlier, but to be honest, like there's a lot of other things you can do for mastering. And for me, like if I was going to do mastering, you, I would break it down by like, hey, I have my EQ, I have my compressor, yeah. I have my limiter, you know, make a whole chain um, instead okay. of ozone. And I, Serum and Massive are some of my, you know, my signature sounds come from those things. So I, you know, sure. it would be hard for me to part with one of those. Okay. Now one's got to go. EQ, sidechain, or automation? 
This one's pretty hard, to be honest, because I feel like they're all really important. I use all of them, like in every single track. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I would go with sidechain mm. just because you can, you can, you can mimic sidechains with like, you know, fades on a, on a sub bass, for example, you can like fade in the sub bass and it'll yeah. give you the exact same effect as a, as a sidechain. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. That's so, a very good point. And I see yeah. people also, they do like a, like a volume automation too. So right. automation yeah. is definitely key. LFO, there's also like LFO tool, you know, you can use that. That's true. That's true. Okay. One's got to go Michael Jackson, Led Zeppelin, or Depeche Mode? Um, definitely not Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is just, you can't, you can't get rid of him. Right. Um, and then it was hard for me. It's hard for me to choose between Led Zeppelin and Depeche Mode, but I would probably, I'd probably get rid of Led Zeppelin. And I know this is like crazy Aww. to say, but Depeche Mode is really cool. <laughs> I, I, right. I, I really, uh, I really like the, uh, that new wave sound that came mm. in the eighties, you know, yeah. that like that Euro pop sound. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, definitely vital for where we're at right now. It was definitely yeah. like getting to the electronic scene. Okay. So mm-hmm. one's got to go French toast, pancakes or waffles. So I'm a big like breakfast brunch kind of food guy. Up, up. Uh, whenever I go out to brunch with my wife, we always get like, one play for each of us and then we like share one like of these three things in the middle for two of us right um so it was hard for me to choose but i guess i'll get rid of pancakes i think i like waffles and i think i like waffles and french toast more than pancakes there you go okay so what's your go-to then for brunch like you're you're going to brunch what's like one of your go-to meal that you're going for i like i like like the combo plates i like the plate Mm. where i can get like a bunch of different things like you know it's got to have like eggs it's got toast you gotta have like that a home fries and then exactly. like a, a meat like a like a bacon or a, a sausage kind of thing you know i feel that i'm a sucker like for eggs place. benedict eggs benedict I'm, just like, too, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so yeah. all right so one's got to go instagram twitter or facebook this one's actually really easy for me and i'm gonna get rid of facebook like Ooh, nice I, okay I, I, I don't know i just it's facebook's just never really been like my thing you know i just hmm. i'm actually like trying to get into twitter more um, I feel like Twitter has more of you know, like a musical presence to it yeah. than oh, yeah. than Facebook does. I just feel like it's so hard to like be engaged. First of all, engagement on Facebook is just terrible. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm very aware of that. I, so it's just it's so impossible to get anywhere. It's true. It's very true. Very true. Yeah. Okay, last one on the game. One's got to go. Your cell phone, your laptop, or your TV. TV, because you can watch everything that you want to watch on either your laptop or your cell phone smooth. You know, they, they do all those things now <laughs> smooth, smooth yeah i absolutely agree absolutely agree and plus for production wise i mean i don't know if you use a pc but you know right now i use a laptop so that's like the most vital important key factor there so most definitely. oh yeah i produce on a laptop too yeah so it's vital it's like it's a definitely must. important <laughs> never Okay, so just wrapping up things, is there any shout outs or anything that you would like to promote that's upcoming in the future? Yeah, man, just a couple things. Uh, first of all, I want to give you a shout out, Matt. You are really kind. Thank you for taking me on <laughs> and uh, featuring me on the Storytime, you know, Storybook 4. Yep. I'm uh, super excited for this opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and thank you for supporting, like, you know, all these rising artists, you know. Oh, it's yeah, not- absolutely. I, I'm really, really happy to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, so this one's the tra- um, chapter four is coming out on the 19th, the 16th, 16th, right? 16th, yeah. So right after that, actually, a week after, I have a two-track EP, Ooh. which is dropping on uh, 3000 base, a UK base label. Yep. Um, so that one's going to be big. Mm-hmm. I've, ha- I've been sitting on these two tracks for a while, so I'm excited for this one to come out. Yep. I got a guest mix for them coming up too. Ooh. So Ooh. I'm excited. So be on the lookout for all those. Yes. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone who's been like, you know, supporting my music, you know, and let's go. It's only the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say before we wrap this up that he, as in Kyogre, sent me his playlist of unreleased tracks and oh my God, it is just like banger, 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 banger. And I feel like 3000 bass is like a perfect label too for you because you have like that, like a UK kind of grittiness sound that's like very popular and that's like a good style for them too. So I'm excited to hear, I I don't even know if it was on the unreleased files that you sent me, but if it is, I'm sure it's going to be one of the fire tracks. I'm super excited for that mix. 
So yeah, it was two. Uh, they, they were in that playlist I sent you. Oh, perfect, um, perfect. So and you I, got those. Yes, awesome. Well, I'm super excited to hear that, and I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out to do this story time spotlight. Once again, my name is Matt Campbell, and you guys are listening to Kyogre. Thanks so much, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.